Hi, kindergarten. We have another habitat story, and this one's called Commotion in the Ocean. Yes, it's very similar to some other stories we've read this year. Those cartoon drawings look familiar. Did you notice the rhyme in the title? Commotion, ocean. Yeah, they do rhyme very good. Well, boys and girls, Today, my excuse for getting to read this story to you is we'll have the goal of trying to figure out what is causing the commotion in the ocean. That's right. We're using this week's strategy of asking questions about what we're reading and trying to find out the answer. So the big question is going to be, what is causing the commotion in the ocean? I'm going to get reading because it's kind of a long story and we can't go over our 15 minutes, can we? Here we go. Commotion in the ocean. There's a curious commotion at the bottom of the ocean. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature that lives beneath mm. the sea swimming through the pages of this book. Mm. There are dolphins, whales, and penguins. There are jellyfish and sharks. There's a turtle and the big white polar bear. But can you see behind the rocks and between the rocks? Let's take a look and find who's hiding there. It's like we're looking out of a window in the bottom of a ship or in a submarine and getting a good view of the ocean. That would be a fun picture to draw, wouldn't it? What you think you would see? The crab. The crab likes walking sideways, and I think the reason why is to make himself look sneaky and pretend that he's a spy. Turtles. We crawl up the beach from the water to bury our eggs on dry land. We, we lay a whole batch, and then when they hatch, they scamper about in the sand. Yes, I did notice that, is she? Yep, batch and hatch rhyme. Good one. Dolphins. The wonderful oh, things know. about dolphins is hearing them try to speak. It's not how do you do, I say to you. It's more of a click, whistle, squeak. Yep, that's how they communicate. Yes? You knew about echolocation? Why am I not surprised you already knew about that, Lou? Yeah, that's how they communicate with each other, isn't it? The angelfish. Hello, I'm the angelfish, darling, the prettiest thing in the sea. What a shame that there are no other creatures as gorgeous and lovely as me. Oh my goodness, I guess that's her opinion. Yeah, somebody might think something else is more beautiful. The jellyfish. The jellyfish just loves to jiggle, which other fish think is quite, uh-oh, silly. She knows that it's not all that's useful, but jiggling's lots of good fun. Look at that pretty jellyfish. Yeah. I remember one time going to the zoo in Toledo and getting to see a real jellyfish and just being amazed at that yeah, creature. Hmm? Tommy remembers going there, too. Here's the shark. I swim with a grin up to greet you. See how many jaws open wide? Why don't you come a bit closer? Please take a good look inside. How many of you would want to get close to a shark? Oh, look at those jaws. One of you had a shark tooth. I can't remember who it was. I know Betty did tell me she wants to see the shark. I don't know. Jason, you do too? Why am I not surprised you're an adventurer? The swordfish. I love to chase after small fishes. It keeps me from getting too bored. And then when I start feeling hungry, I skewer a few on my sword. Yeah, he skewers it kind of like when you take a fork and you stab into your food. Yep, that's what he's talking about when he says he skewers it. The octopus. Having eight arms can be useful. You may think it looks a bit funny, but it helps me to hold all my children and tickle each one on the tummy. Yep, Daniel, I think that's what Grandma needs. She needs eight arms for all you boys, doesn't she? Eight of those arms, that would help. That was weird, right? Stingray. 
At the bottom of the ocean, the stingray flaps his wings. But don't you get too close to him. His tail really stings. The lobster. Never shake hands with a lobster. It isn't a wise thing to do. With a clippity-clap and a snippity-snap, he would snip all your fingers in two. Nora, when I was looking at you, I could see your eyes get really big when I said don't shake hands with a lobster. Almost like you wanted to warn me what could happen. Deep sea, miles below the surface, where the water's dark and deep, live the most amazing creatures that you could ever meet. There are fish of all descriptions, of every shape and size. Some have giant pointy teeth and great big bulging eyes. Some of them can walk around and balance on their fins. But the strangest fish of all have glowing whiskers on their chins. Now that's a strange fish, isn't it? Boys and girls, I want to pause for a moment and ask a couple questions about this page since it's a good strategy. Did you notice the kind of words they were using? It's one of the other skills we're going to practice this week. We're going to be talking about describing words. We call describing words adjectives. We call them adjectives when they're describing a thing. We call them adverbs when they're describing an action. We're probably going to talk the most about describing things this week. But look at how the author chose really interesting words for describing. I'm going to reread this little paragraph here and see if we can find the describing words. Look at, they even use the word descriptions. It sounds like describes, doesn't it? There are fish of all descriptions of every shape and size. So shape and size can describe things. Some have giant pointy teeth. Who knows how they described the teeth? Who remembers? Did you get that? All right, go ahead, Oxley, tell us. Giant and pointy both told us what the teeth looked like. And because the author used those describing words, I could imagine them in my head. It helped me visualize those teeth, right? They weren't little tiny flimsy teeth. They were giant and they were pointy. Mm -hmm. All right, let's find out. Another sentence with the describing word. And great big bulging eyes. What did you notice there? Did you find one, Mason? You found three? Are you going to tell me all three? Okay, what were they? Yes, great. Uh-huh. Big, yes, great and big are similar words, but they're a little bit differently used sometimes and bulging what does bulging mean it looks like it's about to explode those eyes are so big they look like they're gonna pop out of the fish I mean I hope they don't that would be kind of weird but it does okay. give you a really good description all right boys and girls well I'm glad we stopped to ask the question about how the author was describing these fish because not only did it help me understand but it helped me have a picture inside my mind I think I'm going to try to use describing words when I write next time the blue whale there's no other beast on the planet as big as a giant blue whale he measures a massive 100 feet long from his head to the tip of his tail. That would have been a great 100 stay fact. Look at whoosh. Oh, look at there's a little one over here. Barnacles. We're just a bunch of barnacles, and all we do is cling. We know it's not that glamorous, but it's our favorite thing. So they kind of cling or latch on to another animal or maybe even a boat. Yeah, that could be a nuisance. Of course it is. The walruses. Our bodies are covered with blubber, and our tusks are incredibly long. We're grumpy and proud, and we bellow out loud to show that we're mighty and strong. Yeah, they have kind of a unique noise that they make. I can see why they use the word long when they were describing their tusk. Can you imagine having tusk like that? I'm kind of glad we don't. Penguins. We waddle around on our icebergs, which makes our feet slither and slide. And when we get close to the water, we leap with a splash off the side. Mm -hmm. 
polar bears. Deep out in the Arctic, the mommy polar bear snuggles up with all her children since it's very cold out there. Hey, do you know a little bit about polar bears and penguins? We find the polar bears in the Arctic. Yep, that's the North Pole. Do you know where we find penguins? Who knows that? You do know, Reed? Okay, tell us. You're right, in the South Pole, in the Antarctic. You know a lot about habitats. I was much older before I knew the difference between those two places. What a lot of creatures we have seen beneath the sea. What a lot of funny things they do. Some of them might lick their lips and eat you in one bite. And some might want to swim around with you. The dolphin's very friendly and the lobster's very fierce, but the shark is the most dangerous by far. Can you name the other friends we've made along the way? See if you can tell me who they are. Oh, that's going to be another challenge for us. So there's two questions that we're going to try to answer. We're going to try to answer what's causing the commotion in the ocean and see if we can get specific with the names of the animals in the ocean. All right, who wants to tackle our question? Oh, there were so many great listeners. All right, I'm looking around. All right, Jacob, what is causing the commotion or the noise and the craziness in the ocean? Oh, both Jacobs know. All right, tell me at the same time. One, two, three. Yes, it's those creatures, those animals that live in the ocean with all their different types of movements, the things they need to do. What do animals need to do? They need to find their food. That's right. That's one of the things. They need to find shelter or protection. Look at the seaweed that they're hiding in. Yep. When this little fishy here wants to get away from the shark, he's going to cause a commotion and he's going to get quietly snuggled down in that plant, isn't he? All right. So we found out the answer to our question, that the animals are causing the commotion in the ocean habitat. Can you tell me a detail? Remember the question the author asked us? They said, can you name the other friends we've made along the way? All right, which animals did we learn about? Okay, all right, go ahead. Nora, get us started. Yes, there was a walrus, very good. Is she octopus? Good, keep going. Tyler, what did you see? You noticed the swordfish. Oh, you gave me a very particular name of a fish. Thank you. Very good. Okay, Salvatore, what do you want to talk about? You wanted to mention, oh, yeah, that angelfish, that, yeah, kind of a little bit rude, yeah, but it was in the story nonetheless. Very good. Okay, good. Uh, give us another one. All right, Daniel, the stingray. Very interesting. Okay, Mason, what did you notice? Uh-huh. Oh, the whale, that's right, the great big giant one. Okay, good. Okay, Priscilla, what did you notice? Okay, did we mention that one? No, we did not mention the jellyfish yet. You're the first one to remember it. Good. Capri, you have one for us? All right. Which one were you going to talk to us about? Oh, I don't remember that one. You are right. There is a lobster in here. That's right, because I said Nora was going to warn me about the claws. Very good. Well, boys and girls, it looks like we just got a visitor to our home. It looks like Mary stopped in as I'm finishing reading this story. What could we do if we couldn't remember what other animals were in? Yes, we're going to go back. Take a look in the book, go in the text. Kind of like when I didn't remember Capri's answer for sure about the lobster. Yep, very good. All right. Boys and girls, thank you very much for working on the story, The Commotion in the Ocean with me. I'm going to go check on the commotion in my house.